Good evening, friends and family. This is Dr. Jen Kordonsky from Optimal Spine Chiropractic, and tonight's class is Immune System Superhero. This class is about boosting your immune system, making you the strongest, healthiest version of you possible. Um, in this time that we're living through, this pandemic, um, there's so much that we don't understand. There's so many unknowns, there's so many variables, there's conflicting information. And the only real guarantee that we have is building our own health, making ourselves stronger individuals. Um, I'd like to point out that I have seen several um, articles and posts uh, that are, you know, myth busting, boosting your immune system. And I want to clarify for you what I mean by boosting the immune system. And all of these things that I have seen point out that you can't really boost the immune system. You can't make it work more than it already does. And in fact, a boosted immune system or a hyper immune system would be allergies or autoimmune disease. Neither of those things are, are um, something that we want to encourage in our bodies. You know, we don't want our body to overreact to normal stimulus and we don't want our body to attack itself. Uh, we want it to protect us from things that might make us sick. So I want to give you an analogy to help you understand what I mean when I say boost your immune system. Think of uh, having an air conditioning system. Thank God we have that these days. It's been incredibly hot. Um, imagine you have a perfectly functional um, new air conditioning system in your home and you've got the thermostat set to you know whatever's comfortable for you and you're sitting in your house and you are thinking you know uh, this is not what I set it to be this is not you know you know I want it to be 72 it's, it's too hot in here um, and you may try to have somebody come and check your your air conditioning system if you have, for example, a dirty filter, if you have windows open in your house, if you have terrible insulation, the kids keep leaving the door open, and in front of all of your vents, you have bookshelves and furniture blocking the, the vents, how could that air conditioner possibly do what it is designed to do? Even though it has all the parts that it needs, it functions just fine, there are things inhibiting it. There are things taking away from its efficiency. This is what I mean uh, by boosting your immune system. You have, if you're one of the 90% of people that have all of the parts and pieces, all of the genetics for their body to function properly, you have everything you need. Your immune system knows how to protect you. It has what it needs. The parts are there. The systems are in place. But there may be things that are inhibiting uh, ultimate optimal function. There may be things that are creating inefficiencies in your system functioning optimally. You may actually be missing key ingredients that your immune system uses to do the work that it knows how to do. Um, so in reality, we're not boosting anything. What we're doing is removing interference and supplying the necessary ingredients to allow the immune system to work as it was designed and to support its optimal function. And the truth of the matter is that our typical lifestyle in this country, uh, in these times, our typical lifestyle tends to not allow and support healthy immune system function. So we have to go out of our way to do that. And really, that's the entire premise of wellness chiropractic. Chiropractic that's not just for the treatment of an ache or a pain. Chiropractic that is um, designed to support your body and allow it to function optimally. One of my favorite um, things that I get to do in, in this profession is check newborn babies. And it's always so striking to see a newborn baby. We all can see the miracle that they are. Um, and I know that that newborn is perfect the way it is and nothing I can do will make it more perfect. My job is simply to look for anything that might be interfering with that perfection, 
that is chiropractic in its purest, um, removing interference. And so we're gonna discuss things tonight that are going to um, facilitate your immune system working the way it was designed. Actions that you can take, steps that you can make sure, uh, boxes that you can check to make sure that you're giving your body what it needs um, to keep you healthy and well. And let's focus on the fact that a germ, whether it be a bacteria or a virus, but the ubiquitous term, a germ, yes, can cause a disease. And science has really um, come a long way in being able to identify and target, you know, what is the specific thing that causes that specific disease. And we've gotten very hung up on germs cause disease. You know, this germ causes that disease and this germ causes this disease. Um, and it was wonderful that we were able to get to the point where um, we can identify, right? Instead of back when we thought it was bad air or evil spirits, you know, we have a lot more knowledge now, which is very powerful. But it's important to recognize that it's not just the germ that causes the disease. You have in, on, and around your body right now bacteria and viruses. There are likely more viruses in your body right now than there are human cells. So, the germ, the bacteria, the virus isn't able to make you sick in and of itself. It is a balance of your exposure to bacteria or virus and your resistance to them your ability to maintain your balance in your body with the friendly bacteria and whatnot. Um, right now, we see very clearly, it's being pointed out to us that there are many asymptomatic cases of COVID. Um, this is really important that we focus on the fact that there are individuals who are testing positive for this virus that have absolutely zero symptoms there are people who have very mild symptoms, and then there's a whole gamut to the people who experience severe disease from the same virus. It's not the virus that's going to determine whether you have no symptoms or it ultimately kills you. What's the difference? It's the individual, the health of the individual, the resistance and the ability to maintain homeostasis and health. So living in fear of being exposed to the virus is actually just gonna produce more stress for you. And stress is one of the things that is going to detract from your immune system. Stress hormones go up and immune function goes down. So we're gonna just talk about those actions that you can choose that are gonna build health in you and that should lower your stress levels and you may not lower um, all of your risk factors. So, you know, we, we understand more and more about um, what the risk factors are for this particular virus for a person to have a hard time with it. Um, you may not be able to snap your fingers and get rid of your high blood pressure. You may not be able to snap your fingers and change things about your body overnight. But every step that you take towards building health is a step in the right direction it's making you less susceptible. Um, and pointing yourself in the right direction is so crucial, right? We are not going to be done with this in a month. We are not going to just wave a magic wand and have a vaccine. Even if we have one that's uh, effective and safe, it's not just gonna take away all of our concern over this. Um, we have to be taking those steps to building your health and your resistance and know that as long as you're pointing yourself in the right direction, your odds are improving. So let's talk about some things. Um, all of these are specific to the immune system, but I do wanna point out that when you, you're doing any of the steps that we're gonna talk about, they're health factors overall. Um, so the side effect of building health the side effect of taking these action steps, uh, there is no downside to this. Uh, we're only going to be doing ourselves a favor. Number one is getting adjusted. Um, and I know that should not surprise you coming from me, but every system in your body is under the coordination of the nerve system, including the immune system. 
Um, we talked a little bit about, or briefly mentioned, that stress inhibits immune function. Uh, chiropractic adjustments are, have been shown to lower the stress response in the body, maintain or bring back balance of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system. A subluxation or a misalignment in the spine creates a negative uh, irritating whether there's pain or not when a joint doesn't move properly it's sending essentially a distress signal to the brain and causing the body to be in more of a fight-or-flight or, flight or uh, sympathetic mode when we get adjusted we reduce that stress we restore normal motion of the joints and the nerve system is not uh, being pushed towards sympathetic dominance we can swing back towards a balance of sympathetic and parasympathetic rest and digest, uh, heal and repair. So adjustments are a critical component of a healthy lifestyle from birth for as long as you wanna maintain your best function. Um, and it's a really important piece of a healthy immune system. Sleep is next on my list. Um, we teach a whole class about getting better sleep, and I, I urge you to um, check that one out if you have any trouble with it. Getting the adequate amounts of sleep, good quality, good quantity, is critical for the immune function, and even one or two missed nights or, or less than optimal nights sleep will leave you a little bit more susceptible. So it needs to be on our to-do list that we're setting a, a bedtime um, and making sure that we do everything to get good quality sleep. Um, it's so uh, underrated, but really important for health. Third thing on our list is hydration. Uh, basic principle of health is to drink water, right? The body requires hydration and uh, specific to preventing uh, illness from a, a virus or a bacteria, um, I wanna draw your attention to the mucous membranes, um, especially of the nose. So we know that um, that's one of the primary ways that particularly COVID could infect someone um, is through the, the tissues and the mucous membranes in the nose. And um, when your body is hydrated and functioning the way it was designed, your mucous membranes have a protective mechanism of creating mucus and cleaning themselves out. Um, if you're dehydrated and those tissues are dry, then their defenses are slightly weakened. They're more penetrable. The, the dry tissue is not going to be um, as, as protected. So hydration is important for a lot of things, including keeping your mucous membranes healthy and then therefore um, lowering your ability for those bacteria to get in and do harm or virus. Next thing on our list is exercise. Um, exercise is a huge topic that we can cover. Um, I like to say that, you know, if exercise, if the benefits of exercise came in a pill, um, then everyone would be taking it. There's just too many benefits to list. Um, important, relevant to the immune system is that, uh, excuse me, exercise has a stress reducing ability on the body and lowering those stress levels are going to help your immune system function again. And the evidence, the research that shows um, activation or proper function of the immune system in people that even just do uh, low impact or moderate activity at least a few times a week, it's very clear that that facilitates the immune system functioning optimally. It speeds tissue healing. Um, it's just key for maintaining your health. When you feel as if you might be coming down with something, um, I immediately make sure I get adjusted I get a good night's sleep. Um, if I'm feeling up to it, a light workout will get the blood flowing and get the immune system that little boost or that, that uh, encouragement. Um, but there's a fine line there that I don't want you to overdo because excess exercise can absolutely be a stress on the body. And too much exercise without enough rest um, will cause more harm than good. The body will be breaking down more than it can build up. And if you are feeling as if you are coming down with something, use your judgment. Sometimes um, it's a wise idea to go for a walk, get the heart pumping, do something uh, exercise related. 
Other times you have to listen and say, my body really needs rest right now. Um, and that's the direction you need to go in. Um, but it is a tool at your disposal. You should be using it regularly um, to prevent disease. But in the instance of feeling as if you're coming down with something, use your judgment. Five on my list is nutrition. Um, it's well documented that the immune system uses certain key nutrients. Um, the cells of your body need certain essential nutrients in order to function properly. And the best nutrition comes from the foods that we eat. So we should be striving to eat like five to 12 servings of vegetables a day and really focusing on good quality fats. Um, we talked about this a little bit more in Nourish to Flourish, so you can go back and look at that. Um, but the best nutrition comes from food and uh, you cannot make up for with a multivitamin or a supplement what you should be getting from eating a good diet. Um, that brings me to the fact that sugar and foods that break down quickly into sugar, so things that are processed and refined, especially um, carbohydrate rich um, refined foods, you know, think cookies and crackers and pretzels. Um, those kind of foods, when they, they digest very quickly into sugar and sugar in all of its other forms, will actually have a slow down effect on the white blood cells. There's been really cool research that measures um, white blood cell activity after an adjustment. And within 20 minutes after an adjustment, we see um, white blood cells more active. That's what's protecting you and defending you. The exact opposite is been, has been shown um, when, with consumption of sugar. So within 20 minutes after consuming something sugary, the white blood cells, think of them as getting like sluggish um, and lethargic. They are going to be less active, leaving you more vulnerable. So one of the mistakes that people make all the time is we're, we're told that vitamin C is so important for preventing colds and vitamin C will help you get uh, better faster. And while this is true, a lot of people reach for a glass of orange juice to say, oh, give me more vitamin C. But unfortunately, the juice is very high in sugar. So whether it cancels each other out or just has a negative effect, um, one of the things that I stress is if you are feeling like you might be coming down with something, that first little scratch or tickle, um, just take all the sugary stuff out of your diet. Um, give yourself a little bit of a break. Say, you know, tonight I'm just having, you know, something healthy for dinner. Um, I have a list here if you will ask for the notes of all the, the most nutritious foods, um, the, the best food sources of vitamin C and zinc and all of that. Um, and then there's the, the, the bonus foods like garlic and ginger um, that are really supportive of the immune system, help your body fight infection. So if I am even thinking that I might not be feeling so hot, I'm going to make sure sugary stuff stays away. The next meal, throw some extra garlic in it, make sure there's lots of veggies in it, um, and give my body a fighting chance because if your body is starting to work on something and you sit down to that delicious bowl of ice cream, as much as I love it, um, that sugar in, in your system may just lower your immune system a little bit or, or those white blood cells get a little tired and a little lazy and it's just that perfect opportunity for the virus or bacteria um, to get a, a stronghold. So. Next on the list is sunshine. Sunshine is what your body uses to make vitamin D. Vitamin D is used in over 30,000 genes in your body, thousands of different um, reactions, different processes. The vitamin D is crucial for so many things, your bone health um, and definitely your immune system. There have been studies that show that uh, senior citizens given um, vitamin, excuse me, vitamin D um, have 50% less influenza and influenza-like illness. There's lots of good evidence that vitamin D is crucial for immune function. Unfortunately, most of us, especially living in a, a northern uh, hemisphere, are low in vitamin D. 
even during the summer, most of us are working indoors. Uh, most of us are wearing uh, a lot of clothing most of the time. So our skin does not get uh, exposed to enough sunlight to produce adequate vitamin D. So this is very important that we all check what our vitamin D status is. The darker your skin is naturally, the higher likelihood that you are deficient in vitamin D because it'll take more sun exposure to get adequate levels of vitamin D. So someone who is very fair skinned may only need to go out in the sun for a few minutes and their body is able to make the vitamin D. The darker your skin pigmentation is, the longer it takes for your skin to get enough sunshine exposure um, to make that the vitamin D. So the darker your complexion, the more important it is that you have your vitamin D levels tested. Um, we definitely want to be on the high side of normal. And if you haven't had a vitamin D test from your doctor recently, or you don't have a doctor's appointment coming up where you can ask them to do one, there's a website that I use. Um, it's grassrootshealth.net. And you can order your own vitamin D test kit, prick your finger, put a drop of blood on the card, mail it in, and they will um, let you know what your, your vitamin D status is. That way you can know whether or not you need to supplement um, Typically, in the summer, if your levels are good and you're getting outside, you could probably skip the supplement. But the vast majority of people living uh, in the climate we do, as soon as the summer is over, um, should be considering a vitamin D supplement. Um, I'm especially cautious this year and making sure that my whole family is getting their um, levels tested so that we know, especially going into the fall, that we all have good vitamin D status and we don't have to worry about it. Next on the list is friendly bacteria. Like I mentioned before, you have bacteria and viruses in your body all the time that are literally an essential part of your immune system. Science is really just beginning to understand what's called the microbiome and how bacteria in your body are part of your digestion, part of um, the, the creation of neurotransmitters, part of your um, mood and, and your thought processes. The microbiome, the, the activity of bacteria in your body is really not fully understood yet, but we know that it is important that we don't disrupt the microbiome. And antibiotics will, will kill bacteria. That is what they were designed to do. And they have been overused, to say the least. Uh, we know we have created superbugs, antibiotic-resistant bacteria, um, and it's especially important that we are diligent in not allowing our bodies to be exposed to antibiotics unnecessarily. You know, they can save lives, obviously, but historically they have been terribly overused and continue to be overused. Um, the World Health Organization estimates that I think 30% of antibiotic prescriptions are unnecessary. Uh, but it's very hard to go to, you know, imagine you have a, a child with an ear infection and they're uncomfortable. They go to the doctor and the doctor diagnoses the ear infection. It's really hard for everybody to do what's actually recommended, which is watch and wait um, and not immediately jump to the antibiotic. Um, but ultimately the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that we watch and wait and not immediately prescribe the antibiotic. I heard this only secondhand, but a patient told me that um, someone in their family just recently was having symptoms of a sore throat and fever, had a telemedicine appointment with their doctor and was prescribed a antibiotic. Uh, they were diagnosed with strep with no testing, um, you have to be your own advocate. You have to insist on being tested. You have to ask if it's absolutely necessary that you have an antibiotic. You have to ask if you could wait and what the consequence of waiting a few more days might be. Um, 
but that's it's challenging and um, it's kind of going against the grain but ultimately and in wrapping all of this up I want to point out that unless you go against the grain a little bit you can expect to have similar health as the majority of people in our country in our culture if you look at the statistics on health here in the US they're really pretty abysmal. Um, we rank very poorly when you compare other industrialized nations for overall health. Um, we have you know, the highest rates of obesity. We have very poor um, uh, um, statistics for newborns and mothers. Um, it's really unfortunate and we have the most access. We spend more money on healthcare than any other nation. And yet our health does not reflect that. So if you want different results, you have to take different actions. Um, if you want to get what everyone else is getting, then do what everyone else is doing. But if you want something different, you have to do something different. And you can be part of the solution. You can take a step. In the right direction you could take a step towards building your health um, not living in fear of disease not just waiting for a breakdown not waiting for something that needs to be fixed or diagnosed or corrected and just be proactive in building your health um, and that's what we're here for to help encourage you that's what showing up to these classes should be doing is just keeping you inspired and keeping you on track track not every day will be perfect um, but every day is an opportunity to move in the right direction. Um, we get off course, we go back on course. Um, I can't wait to see you at your next adjustment. And if you have questions, you need help with anything, um, just let us know. If you'd like the notes for tonight's class, then please just let us know. Um, call us, email us, text us, tell us at your next appointment, and we'll get you a copy um, as soon as we can. So have a wonderful evening.